and welcome to UFC Connected. We've got another big lineup for today's show. Here's what's coming up. Lerone Murphy reveals how MMA saved his life after a shocking crime. So I was shot in the side of the face. Yeah, I straight through the mouth. Edson Barboza breaks down his best weapons in Signature Series. I feel kind of clean, the fight's over. Wow! Rafael Dos Anjos relives his title-winning performance against Anthony Pettis. People think he was just too good. I love to prove people otherwise. And fighters give their first-hand accounts of making the walk to the UFC octagon. The walk is a part of the fight. Like a modern gladiator. To a lot of people, that's crazy, but I love it. In 2013, UFC featherweight Lerone Murphy sustained multiple bullet wounds in a drive-by shooting. Forced with a decision on what path to take in life, Lerone turned to MMA and found his calling. Eight years later, Lerone is now regarded as one of the hottest prospects coming out of the UK, and he shows no signs of slowing down. Lerone shares his remarkable journey from the streets of Manchester to the UFC octagon in Fighter Focus. Fighting out of Manchester, England, Lerone, the Miracle Murphy! I'm called the Miracle because I had a close shave earlier on in life and it's a miracle I'm here. I grew up in Manchester. It's a crazy place. Growing up in Manchester, especially around where we're from, it's, you know, it's tough. The time that we grew up, there was a lot of gangs. There was a lot of gang culture. Lerone was one of the street kids at the time. You know, he was just like any of the other younger ones from around our way. He was just on the streets doing his thing. It's more than easy to fall into that lifestyle because it's everything you hear, even on the radios, about people respect these guys in it. So a lot of the kids growing up, they're thinking, how do I get respected? Like, how do I get to people to like me? So it's easy to fall into that. From our perspective, it's always been about competition. It's always been trying to be the best, trying to be the strongest, trying to be the boy in your area and trying to be the one that everyone's always talking about. Young boys, you know, trying to be better than each other and it unfortunately ended up in Lerone being shot. <laughs> I was shot in the face coming out of a barber's. So I was shot in the side of the face, yeah, like straight through the mouth. The bullet lodged in my mouth and ended up having to spit it out. My mouth felt heavy and I just, I, obviously I just thought it was blood or something, but like, I seen the bullets on the floor. After that situation happened, Lerone learned. He was aware that, you know, this situation, it could have ended up in him, him being dead. I had two options there and then come down this path or go down that path. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Full Contact Contender 7. I didn't really know about mixed martial arts at that stage. I went to Kane's fight at FCC, and that was the first fight, MMA fight I've seen live. The roof just blew off the Reebok. Half the arena is here to see Kane Musa tonight. Lerone and all, all of his friends and all the younger ones from around my area, they, they came out and, yeah, we, we got the job done and it was electric, man. Neil Hall taking a look at this very carefully. Kane Musa gets the TKO win. It was one of the moments where I can see us looking from the outside, from Lerone's perspective, it would be something that you'd say, well, I, I want to get a piece of this. Everyone was going mad and from there, I wanted to fight it did spur him to get in the gym and come and start chasing his dreams. First day in the gym, I liked it because everyone was just equal in there. And like, it didn't matter who was outside of the gym or whatever, everyone was equal on the mat. Jogging back, everybody. Let's have good quality to work, pride in what we're doing. So you got to train hard, you can get better, you can grow every day. Everyone respects MMA fighters, and I just wanted to be the best. Play, lower your head level. On to you. Good. I believe, by virtue of what he went through, 
being shot. Nice. Nice. Dealing with the after effects of it, I believe that that made him as a person. I think from the moment he walked into the sport, he took a, a different outlook on it. He kind of invested all his energies into it, became everything that he did from a person who was distracted, had a lot of things going on outside the sport, some positive, a lot negative, and then he just channeled all his energies into him and just went all in. Time. Leron Murphy! He has the X Factor. He's just so cold, so chilled in there, and he just sees a lot. He sees things a little bit sharper and a, with a little bit more clarity. Laurent Murphy unleashed him with the body shots. One, two, three, and it's all over. And he can really punch with both hands. He has a lot of power. He's just a, a built to be an athlete. Oh, Laurent Murphy catches him with a big right hand. Ganya's head is bounced off the canvas every single shot from the road. Oh, and there we go. And Murphy knocks him out. I just knew that his ceiling was a little bit different to everybody else's, so I knew that I had to get his star out there. I woke up in the morning and I just got a message off Sean Shelby who just said, Zubera Tukhov, uh, the date, Abu Dhabi, it was like three weeks' time. Can you do it? Yeah, let's go. I got the call from my coach. He's saying I had a fight in three and a half weeks, and I just thought I'd take it, this is my chance. And I just knew, like, this is my time to shine and change my life. This is Manchester. Here we go, here we go, Manchester. I mean, this is a huge matchup for him to face somebody like Tuka Hugov. I mean, as his debut, this is a huge opportunity for him. Everyone was just saying, this guy's a beast. He's going he's gonna to murder him. Oh, oh, he gets clipped with the jab, and oh, he's hurt. Big right hand. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Late sub attempt from Murphy. Big Kimura. I always knew myself that I can beat him, and I always knew that it won't be an easy fight for him, no matter how good he was. Nice uppercut lands. Circle your hands inside. There, nice right hand lands behind the double jab. These guys are scrapping now. First fight was a draw. It felt like a loss to me, because it wouldn't win. This fight is declared a split. Draw. Imagine you're going to your second fight and you got a draw and you still not got a win, so just gave me more fire. Representing Manchester, England, Michael, here is Lerone Murphy's second UFC appearance for him. Very confident coming into this one. This kid's a real problem at 145. Ooh. Yeah, Manila, strike now. Shots, strike, shots. strike, strike if the exit's there. Big shot. Big shot. Oh, oh beautiful shots. grab, but he's going to be out. Oh, my God. Right hands, puts the That's it. That's it. Murphy, wow. still undefeated. Yeah. First win in the Octagon, it was amazing. It was like a big, big weight I've lifted off my shoulders. It's literally the best feeling I've ever felt. Proved to the world that I'm not just your average fighter and I'm not just going to be in and out. I'm like, I'm, I'm here to challenge. It's simple as that. Very young, he got into some trouble, and he's still here fighting now, making the good choices, got into fighting, it saved his life like it's done for so many MMA fighters, and now he's out there doing his thing. I feel like MMA saved me because I, I, like, I've got something to aim for now, I'm doing something in my life, whereas if I didn't, I could be in jail, could be dead, could be like, who knows? To turn your life around from that to this, just shows people that it's never too late to turn your life around and do something good. Just such a natural athlete. Find something that you love and just go for it. Murphy! UFC featherweight contender Edson Barboza has long been regarded as one of the most elite strikers to ever step foot inside the octagon. His athletic ability and explosive style have helped him to defeat some of the biggest names in the sport all while assembling one of the most jaw-dropping highlight reels in UFC history. The Brazilian takes us through some of his most devastating techniques in this edition of Signature Series. My style, I think, is unique because definitely I'm the most create strike in MMA. It's in Barboza, he's fun to watch. He's one of the more dynamic kickboxers in the UFC. I have no calls with the low kick, body kick, high kick, the fly knee. I have no calls with the punch. I have knocked down with the body shot. 
beautiful technique by Barbosa. My strike background, I was compete a lot in Taekwondo and Muay Thai. That's part of my whole life. I do this my whole life. It's so easy to go in the octagon and put everything there. Watch these kicks. I mean, he executes them perfectly with beautiful technique. Definitely prefer kicking than punch because kicks hard. Oh, man. You could hear that one. Whatever connect the kick, low body or high, I hurt my opponent for sure. I'm Edson Barbosa. This is my signature series. First move, leg kicks. The leg kicks definitely strong part of my game. I hurt many, many people. I mean, he's a one-legged fighter right now. Most people don't believe in the leg kick. I really believe. I know if I connect one, you'll be fine. If I connect two, you'll be fine. But if I connect to three, four, five leg kicks on you, the fight's over. Let's hit it, it's yeah. all over! I know when I connect the good leg kicks, the face of my opponents change. It's crazy. And the most guys change the fight stance. That's I know, okay, I hurt you, bro. Barboza putting on a striking clinic here. Yeah, he is. Range is very important. Keep a little bit distance. Fake the jab, make the guys care for the shot, for the punch. Shoulder kick, always try to connect with the shin and go beat the leg. If you turn too much, you're gonna hold your leg and try to take you down. I try to be square a little bit, whip in and come back. I really prefer to kick the top of the leg because calf kick is so easy to defend and it's very dangerous when somebody know how defense the calf kick. That's why I prefer to kick the leg. It's a big muscle, and if you see my background, work very well. Barboza, Oliveira, here we go. You don't need much power to drop the guy with the leg kick. You need consistency. Another heavy leg kick. He no, can't do it crazy. much stronger. That's it. That's, That's it. it. And it's all over. Edson Barboza finishes a fight via leg kicks once again. Next up, the switch kick. The switch kick, definitely one of my favorite moves. It's coming from Muay Thai. I spent years just stopping in front of the bag and switch kick, switch kick, switch kick for hours. I think that's a, my best move in the fight. Oh, man, those are hard. It's a very safe movement for me. Whatever the switch kick, connect in the body or arm, it's too hard a lot. It's so hard to defend, it try counter attack or hold the leg. Is a very powered movement. Look at this big body kick that lands. When you switch, my bottom leg need to be a point. The power is coming from the hips. Keep your foot ready to go, turn your foot, and just throw the legs. My fight against Dan Hooker, I connected him like a three times like a straight, like switch kick. He defends well, but I throw again, I throw again. And yeah, I hurt him. Oh, big body shot. Right back to the body, Hooker goes down, Edson Barboza. Great performance by Edson. Finally, the spinning heel kick. The spinning heel kick, I learned in Taekwondo. I really believe I throw this kick every fight because I try to be surprised, you know? I try to do some regular kick. The most guys throw like a low kick and body kick. And this one's coming from nothing, you know? That's very efficient kick and very, very strong. The best time to throw the heel kick when your opponent step in. When your guy come in, you know he's gonna be there. It's very important to use a fence with your eyes. I use fence with my eyes all the time. 
looking down, most guys think about, okay, he's gonna attack my leg. That's you gonna throw the spin. Big oh, first oh, round. The wheel kick. And when you pinning, it's very important to stay in the ball of the feet because if you have a flat foot, you can't spin fast. Stay in the ball of the feet and circle your upper body really fast. Your leg just follow really fast. Sometimes you don't need to connect clean. So many times I connect this kick not clean, but this kick make your opponent scare and the fight complete change. But if you connect clean, the fight's over. In my fight against Terry Atten, their fight, I remember I connected him a couple kicks on the body first. When I connect the low kick, I will step back a little bit. I force him to step in. And I know he's scared for the body shot. That's when I go on the face. I tried the movement and I connected the famous kick, you know? Maybe the most spectacular knockout in UFC history. When I connect, I saw his go down like a tree, and I know the fight's over. I was very, very happy. That's the, the kick changed my life. And the winner, by At UFC 185, Rafael Dos Anjos made history. He became the first Brazilian to be crowned UFC lightweight world champion. After blazing through a group of the division's elite in 2014, RDA earned a title shot against undisputed champion Anthony Pettis. The showtime brilliance of Pettis was no match for Dos Anjos on that night, as the Brazilian's dominant performance won him the lightweight crown. Rafael takes us back to that memorable night in Dallas in my moment. Yeah, Since I signed with UFC, everything that I do, I try to be the best at. You have to keep working hard, have resilience, and keep grinding. The three fights that took me to my title shot was a, a very intense year for me. I fought Jason High, tough dude. Then I fought Ben Henderson on my first main event. Oh, down goes Henderson, Rafael Dos Anjos! Then I took Nate Diaz on a three rounds fight. Oh, this is another level of fighting. I would love to have a chance for a title. Pettis texted me right after the fight and said, wow. So, it's Dos Anjos. Anthony Pettis, he was the number one pound for pound in the world. A lot of hype on him. Very athletic, flashy guy. To bring oh, him to the did you see that? Pretty much unbeatable. That kid is so talented. He finished Ben Henders to take the title. He taps. Oh, and it's all over. Anthony Pettis is the UFC champion of the world. I was. Pretty much as always, an underdog. People think like I couldn't fight that guy, he was just too good. I love to prove people otherwise. That was my moment I was going to win that fight. It is showtime in the Lone Star State. This is UFC 185, Pettis versus Dos Anjos. Dos Anjos is really in the perfect time of his career to challenge for the title. The momentum that he has coming into this fight, right now, he is at a championship level. This young man has continued to be dominant. 28 years old, he's got the personalities, he's got the fighting styles, and he has earned four straight wins in less than 15 minutes. I remember looking to the other side and he was well, they were taking me for granted. Like, what are you doing here? You're gonna get killed. And that, that, I love this. 
I'm gonna prove you guys otherwise. Five five-minute rounds for the UFC lightweight championship. Okay, you ready, sir? You ready, sir? Let's go. Fight. Here we go. Yeah, the plan was, you know, to to use a lot of body kicks, you slow him down, and stay on him. That left kick to the body is money, and he lands it again. I think the first uh, punch I caught him, I already broke his orbital bone. Oh, oh big he left! Him. He tagged him clean. I felt like it was like bugging him a lot. He was kept like touching that, you know, that cut. And the plan was like to keep damage that area. Dos Anjos looks outstanding, Mike. Another hard shot to the body. Good first round for the challenger. After the, the first round, my coach said, okay, you're doing great. Keep in doing what you're doing. And keep putting the pressure, mix it up with the takedowns a little bit more. Steps in with an elbow, looks for the takedown again. Can he get it? Yes. He's got to watch his arms. Once I got on top of him, I was a little worried about the armbar. He's very good off of his back. But once I was on top, I felt secure. My coach Gordo said, okay, hey, go ahead. Pass his guard, smash him. Look at this, beautiful ground and pound. Ferocious. Two big rounds in the book for the challenger. After the second round, going to the third, I felt like I had the fight. I just had to keep doing what I was doing. Javier Dos Anjos may be dominant, but Anthony Pettis dangerous every single second. Beautiful head kick, but Dos Anjos ate it and landed a nice left hand. To the body, and he wants another takedown. And he gets it. Beautiful. He's looking for the Kimura on Pettis, and Pettis is in trouble if he gets it separated from his body. I'm good on that position, but like his fingertips went inside the glove. So it was pretty locked down, and I couldn't break the grip. And what a pace. Kept by Dos Anjos. Wow, four amazing rounds for the challenger. It took a lot of heart from him to keep going on that fight. Uh, I think many fighters would like just quit and he pushed through to the fifth. Take down number eight, inside control once more. He's gonna try to finish him, he's gonna try to finish him. He's got the back, he's got the body triangle. I knew I had won that fight. I said to him, the show is over. Javier Dos Anjos. We have a new champion. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. We have a new champion. A new UFC lightweight champion of the world. It was the first time I had my kids going to the fight. I, since we moved here, I said, when dad fights for the title, I'm gonna take you guys, and I took my whole family. Ah, what a great moment. Yeah. Having my family share that moment with me, having my kids holding the belt, was a, a very satisfying moment, you know? I am Rafael dos Anjos, and that was my moment. <laughs> Walking out to the UFC octagon has been described as exhilarating, exciting, even downright terrifying. For some fighters, the walkout offers a chance to entertain and connect with the fans. Others use it to make their final preparations before going to battle. We asked UFC athletes how they deal with this unique experience and what it means for them to make the walk. Man, it's nothing like a proper walkout with a bunch of people there. Get your heart pumping, get your mind racing, and it definitely gets you ready for war. Probably my favorite feeling, walking out. I love it. It's really what attracted me to fighting the most. This is just that walkout and people going crazy. You're just ready at that point. All right, it's here, it's time. Let's go. The walk to the octagon is petrifying. <laughs> when I am in the locker room, I feel really nervous, to be honest. I am a champion. You have guys shouting at you. Oh, yeah, it's your time, man. Three minutes, two minutes, one minute. 
Let's go. Making the walk to the curtains, that's probably the most nerve wracking time. You've got so many different thoughts going through your head, you know, why am I doing this? What did I get myself into? It's like, okay, what face do I put on? How should I be? How should I walk? Should I look confident? Should I look scared to fool my opponent? They count down. They're like, all right, ready in three, two. And then they push you forward and uh, you, you make that walk. I don't know how other fighters feel about it, but I don't like it. You do your best to put a poker face on and act like it's not bothering you, but it is scary, man. You definitely psych yourself out because, you know, the, everything's bigger, the lights are brighter. The spotlight's on you, the cameras are flashing. So loud, you couldn't even hear yourself think. The roar of the crowd makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. You don't really see people, but at the same time, you feel so much energy coming from the crowd and coming from your music. I love to pick music that I rock out to. Showcasing that we're not only fighters and athletes, but we're also entertainers, and this is our opportunity to show our personality. Take in the energy from the fan base, try to give something back. I listen to the music and the people, and I think, oh my goodness. Fans, you know, everybody cheering you on, you know, pump you up. Fans are reaching out to you, that's giving you more energy, making you super motivated. I try to take in the moment from the song to the audience to the lights. There's always like that few specific people. I love you, Gregs. Go kill him, Gregs. Whether you suck, Gregs. The fans are ruthless. You want to silence them. You want to make them remember your name. And the best way to do that is to knock out their hometown guys. I almost like the away crowd more than I like the home crowd. It really puts you in the feel like you're fighting. It's like a modern gladiator. For me, the walk is a part of the fight, like a transition into this thing that's about to happen. You train for it, but it's not the same because your adrenaline is pumping the same. It's moments before you go into war. To a lot of people, that's crazy, but I love it. When you're walking out to any other sport, you're going out there to play. When you're walking out to a fight, you're going out there to fight for your life, not play a game. As soon as I put my foot on that first step up into the octagon, it's like crossing over a boundary. I need to hold myself to not cry because I know my friends there, my family there. A very, very special moment. Ah! Look my arm. Just to think about it, it's amazing. Well, that's it for this episode, but get in touch and share your thoughts online by using the hashtag UFC Connected. Until next time, I'm Megan O'Levy, and I'll see you at the fight.